Good day everyone. I am Bridget Garcia. I am one of the nurse educator from Nursing and Patient Care Services and I'll be discussing Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. The Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative is a program of the Department of Health and is pursuant to the Republic Act 76,000 or Rooming In in Breastfeeding Act of 1992. Some of the objectives is to facilitate and protect breastfeeding in private and public hospitals. Also, it helps mothers and their newborn start with breastfeeding soon after birth. Another set of objectives is to implement the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding and to end the distribution of free and low-cost supplies of breast milk substitutes to health facilities. So one example of breast milk substitute are formula milk or the powdered milk. Another objective is to provide a framework for enabling mothers to acquire the skills that they need to breastfeed exclusively for six months and to continue breastfeeding with additional complementary foods for two years or beyond. Furthermore, a mother baby friendly hospital also assists mothers who were not breastfeeding to make informed decisions and to care for their babies as well as possible. The global strategy also calls for further implementation of baby friendly hospital initiative for breastfeeding to be included in the curriculum of the healthcare workers and to yield better data on breastfeeding. In the international realm, Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative is part and parcel of the health and nutrition in the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Developmental Goals. So the two Sustainable Developmental Goals that supports Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative is goal number two and number three. For the local scenario, the legal mandates and national programs related to Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative are the following. For health facilities, we are guided with the Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, enforcement of the Milk Code and Republic Act 128, the IYCF or the Infant Young Child Feeding Standards and Guidelines, the IYCF in malnutrition, special medical conditions, and infant feeding in emergencies. As for the family and community, they are also guided with the peer counseling, support groups, in barangays, enforcement of the Milk Code and Republic Act 128, IYCF in malnutrition, special medical condition, and infant feeding in emergency. So now, you, we can also observe that there is no distribution of milk formulas in the community, especially during this pandemic. Also, what is important is to know in our working places, there must be an enforcement of RA-128 or the provision of the lactation rooms and breastfeeding breaks for their employees, and at the same time, the enforcement of milk code and the maternity leave. As part of the Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, we must be familiarized with this joint WHO UNICEF statement of 1989, the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. So every facility providing maternity services and care for newborn should first have a written breastfeeding policy that is routinely communicated to all healthcare staff. Two, train all healthcare staff in skills necessary to implement this policy. So we have the 20R and 40R lactation training for all staff catering for mother and child. Number three, inform all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding. This is being done during their prenatal visits in the private clinics of the doctors or during pregnancy and beyond. Number four, help mothers initiate breastfeeding within a half hour of life. Number five, show mothers how to breastfeed and how to maintain lactation even if they should be separated 
from their infants. So we give education on the bedside, not just the nurses, but also the physicians involved with the care of the mother and the newborn. Number six is to give newborn infants no food or drink other than breast milk unless medically indicated. Number seven, practice rooming in and allow mothers and infants to remain together 24 hours a day. Number eight is to encourage breastfeeding on demand. Number nine is to give no artificial teeth or pacifier, also called as dummies or soothers, to breastfeeding infants. And last but not the least is to foster an establishment of breastfeeding support groups and refer mothers to them on discharge from the hospital or clinic. So after several years, the UNICEF WHO released the revised 2016 10 Steps to Successful Breastfeeding. So you have here the first part of the poster from step one to step four. Also, the following are the additional six steps of the revised poster. As you can observe, they have elaborated and provide further information per step. As for our beloved institution, Makati Medical Center, we aim to promote, protect, and support exclusive breastfeeding of newborns. This is in line with the WHO Global Strategy for IYCF as upheld by the DOH. And we are actively promoting breastfeeding through the following programs and initiatives. First is to educate all pregnant women on the advantages of exclusive breastfeeding and the basic principles of breastfeeding before delivery and beginning at the prenatal checkups. Second, there is a non-separation of newborn infant and mother starting from delivery and direct rooming in of all healthy babies. So part of the MMC breastfeeding policy is that we provide skilled assistance and lactation counseling of all mother baby diets upon delivery and for the duration of their hospital stay. Fourth is to the promotion and assurance of successful breastfeeding in babies who cannot be roomed in. So for the babies for observation, they are admitted in the transitional care unit located in the newborn services at 5th floor tower 1. And we are proud that Makati Medical Center has a milk bank located at newborn services unit. Fifth is the regulation against the use of artificial teeth, pacifiers, infant formulas, and glucose water in feeding healthy infants. So also part of our policy is to provide continuous support for mothers after discharge through the MMC breastfeeding support groups. So even after discharge, they can visit the lactation services, the different breastfeeding room and clinic, and at the same time, some of the patients can consult our lactation consultants. And in the community support, we have partnerships. First is in the Makati City Health Bankal Milk Bank, Breastfeeding Pinais, which is a Facebook group, through Adula, Miss Noel Pola, and another support group, which is the South Pinanais, a peer support group in the south of Metro Manila. So another policy is the availability of Makati Medical Center's breastfeeding station for the use of breastfeeding mothers at the following location. So first is the breastfeeding station located at the third floor circular tower one. Next is the transitional care unit TLC, Fifth floor, tower one, for exclusive use of inpatients. Third is the Well Baby Clinic, second floor, tower three, health services unit. And last but not the least, the additional unit, we have the Women's Wellness Center, seventh floor, Ayala North Exchange. This is for employees, third party service providers, 
patients, and visitors of Makati Medical Center. Furthermore, Makati Medical Center has been accredited as breastfeeding in the workplace company, and employees may express breast milk at the following breastfeeding stations, and the lactation period or additional breaks can be one to three times, or there is a maximum of additional 40 minutes within the eight hour work period to be included in their regular breaks for meals. It is also stipulated in the Makati Medical Center breastfeeding policy that we do continuously train medical and non-medical staff on the exclusive breastfeeding policies and principles. That's one of the reasons why we have the yearly SSE. It is also included there, the mother baby friendly orientation, and at the same time, for those healthcare workers that handles mother and child diets, we have the 20 hour lactation management training and the 40 hour lactation management training. Furthermore, we do provide the availability of infant feeding support for HIV positive mothers. And last but not the least, we do provide respect for the patient's rights through informed consent. The following are other information related to breastfeeding. To answer the need for early breastfeeding, we have these four core steps, or the Essential Intrapartum Newborn Care, or EINC, or in Filipino, we call it Unang Yakap. Unang Yakap is encouraging breastfeeding from the start. It is a co simple cost-effective newborn care intervention that can improve neonatal as well as maternal care. It is an evidence-based intervention that emphasizes a core sequence of action performed in a step-by-step -step manner. It is also organized so that essential time-bound interventions are not interrupted and fills a gap for a package of bundle of interventions in a guideline format. So we can appreciate these steps in the delivery room. So let's have it one by one. So the first step is the immediate and thorough drying of the baby. Second is the early skin-to-skin -skin contact between the mother and the newborn. Third is the properly timed cord clamping. And fourth is the non-separation of the mother and the baby for early breastfeeding initiation. So aside from the 10 steps of successful breastfeeding and EINC, then let's move forward to other concepts related to breastfeeding. So first, is the science of positioning and attachment. So for the general considerations, first, is the mother looks healthy overall? Next, we make sure that the mother is sitting comfortably during the breastfeeding. Another is the baby looks healthy, calm, and relaxed because crying is a late sign of hunger. So we need, we need to console the baby first before lashing it to the breast. And last is to check if the mother's breast looks healthy. Another set of concepts are the signs of good attachment of baby on mother's breast. So these are a good illustration on how we can make sure that there, there is a good sign of attachment. So first is that the chin of the baby must be touching the breast of the mother. Next, the mouth should be wide open, so in a representation like this, okay? Then the lower lip must be turned outward because some, the initial action of the, the lips of the baby is being curled like this. So what we can do is to maneuver, okay? You check and we can assist the baby to have this kind of lutching for proper latching and attachment. And last is that the areola, there must be more visible above than below the mouth. So for the baby's position, we need to make sure the following. 
First, the baby should be in line with the ear, shoulder, and hip that forms a straight line and is depicted with this picture. Next, the baby must be close to the mother. There should be no obstruction between the mother and the baby. Even thick clothing must be considered, reconsidered. So this is a good picture that depicts that. Next is that we need to provide support or the head must be supported at the head, the shoulder, and if newborn, the whole body. So this is another good representation of that position or consideration. And last but not the least is facing the breast. The baby must be fully facing the mother and the breast of the mother. Moving forward, the following are the breastfeeding positions. And I presume that these are the common pictures that we encounter re related to breastfeeding. So for the first breastfeeding position is the rugby hold. So as you can observe, the baby is handled like a football. That's why it is called football or rugby hold. Next is the side lying. So this is usually indicated for post-CS mothers. Not to add pressure in the abdominal area. And at times, it is also indicated for good for big, bigger babies as well. Next, we have the cross cradle hold. So this is another hold that you can also observe. And at the same time, as you can see here, there is a free hand for the mother to do other things. Another or the most common hold is the cradle hold, which is depicted in this last picture. So after all the discussion about 10 steps, and at the same time, the different concepts related to breastfeeding, let's move forward to the last part of this discussion, which is the frequently asked questions. And these are the questions usually asked during internal audits or even during accreditations. So for the first question, why is breastfeeding important? Obviously, breastfeeding provides safe and complete nutrition to babies. Next question, what does MMC do to support breastfeeding? So we have the program that it is through direct rooming in. And here in our institution, it is not allowed to advertise, neither display, nor sell formulas, feeding bottles, and nipples. This is in pursuant of the EO 51 or uh, commonly called as milk code. So what if the auditor will act, uh, ask us about what can you do to support women so that they can breastfeed well, especially when they are here in Makati Medical Center. So first we need to provide information where they can get the enough information or support related to their breastfeeding or breastfeeding problems. So we can usher them or we can direct them to the following breastfeeding clinic and stations appropriate for their needs. So first, for outpatients, we can offer the third floor circular, Tower 1. Next is the HSD or the Well Baby Clinic located at the second floor, Tower 3. And also, Women's Wellness Center located at the 7th floor, Ayala North Exchange. And last but not the least, for those who are admitted or for our inpatients, we can usher them to the Newborn Services Unit or what we also call as TLC. So aside from knowing the different location, we can also usher mothers, again, usher the mothers, if it is possible, to those areas. 
And at the same time, we can also remind them that they can use that areas not just for the direct feeding, but also with the use of their own breast pump for infection control purposes. Or at times, some patient can do hand expression to express breast milk. Furthermore, there could be some questions pertaining to or what if we will encounter bottle-fed babies along the hallway or along the doctor's clinic, along the hallway and the do uh, towards the doctor's clinic. What we can do is to approach them and we can instruct them to feed their baby inside the doctor's clinic for not to influence other mothers of doing such thing since we are a mother baby friendly institution. And for the last FAQ or the usual um, question by the auditors, they, will, they might ask us, do we have a nursery? And the answer is no, there is no nursery because healthy infants are in regular rooms with their mothers because what we practice is direct going in. But what if the mother or the baby is not feasible for direct rooming in. So there is a newborn service unit, transitional care unit, where babies for observation and babies whose mothers are unable to care for them are placed temporarily. But again, before discharge, all mothers are empowered to continue, promote, and protect breastfeeding. And as the saying goes, breastfeeding is not a choice, it's a responsibility. So hopefully you are one with us to protect, promote, and support breastfeeding. Thank you and have a nice day.